The morning show that doesn't suck. That's life. In case you haven't noticed, it is cruel and uncaring. You know who we're talking about. You're listening to Rob Mike Richards on News Talk Saga 960. It is 741. News Talk Saga 960. Raw Mike Richards. And I'll tell you, it's impressive already. If you could see this on Zoom. If you can see me now, as the song goes, look at me, Ma. I'm doing great, Ma. And he is doing great. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, a good friend of mine, known for a long time. Uh, we've done a lot of things together, some of which I really don't want to talk about. The, most of what Adam has seen of his good friend, Mike Richards, is terrible stuff. Like really awkward, weird. I remember one time in a particular rough bar, <laughs> as chairs were being thrown around the room and fights, fights were breaking out. The drunks were arguing over really ugly, skaggy women. And I think there was knives. There, there, there might've been an AK-47 at one point. It was just horrible. And I'm standing in the middle of it with a big cigar. And I scream, I love it. And I was like, can we, <laughs> can we leave now? Can we go? <laughs> what, what's Why wrong? are we here? What's wrong with you? His name is Adam Oldfield. He has done a lot of things in his lifetime, but this last uh, docu-series, as they do on the major stars, and sadly, they do a lot of these docu-series when something has gone wrong, and there's no question with the world. Uh, mourning over Chris Farley, which uh, in some ways, for a generation, it's a little John Candy-ish. People always have this big uh, heart for that uh, person's performance and the loss of Chris Farley was massive, but to be uh, chosen, I mean, chosen to play Chris Farley in a docu-series is just like the coolest thing ever. So happy when I heard it, he joins us now, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Oldfield, Adam. Oh, go on. Thanks. Yeah, come, oh, on. come on. You, That's it. Yeah. You're the greatest man. Thank you so much. It's like you guys are awesome. I love this show. You know, raw. It's got everything. Love, emotions. It's got anger. I love it. It's everything I've wanted in life, Mike. Thank you so much. Well, well, I hey, I gotta tell you. The moment and the first time I met you was is classic because it's 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 in a lot of ways it's the thing that people love about Chris Farley. You walk into the studio at Y ninety five and I'm working with uh, Jeff Lumby and and Todd Lewis, but you come walking in <laughs> like a little bit of a hurricane, but disheveled. I'm like, who who is this? And and, and he goes, Hi, my name's my name's Adam. I go, Adam, and for, I start singing. He has his own theme song when he'd walk in the room. I was like, Adam. Ba, 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 da, ba, Adam, and it was uh, a friendship from the first second that we met hanging around in those days in the late 90s was uh, uh some of the most fun i had and of course you know the shenanigans that we got into but you've always had an energy about you quite frankly that is the same energy that chris farley has but there's also a heart and a likability to it like if you don't like if you don't like Adam Oldfield, then what do you do? You not like puppies or <laughs> soup? What's the matter with you? But this, you have to tell people, and we'll get to what you've done with your life. You're you're technically not an actor, but you do act when called upon. But how did you come to play Chris Farley in this series? That, great question. I mean, uh, you know, randomly, I had a, a I'm part of a Rotary Club, which is me and a lot of uh, gentlemen and ladies that are like, let's do good for the community for the last hundred years. And uh, one of them said to me, uh, "You remind me of of that that guy that passed away." And I said, uh, "Okay, that's, that's a lot of people. <laughs> the big guy, the you know, the heavy set guy." And I'm like. Uh, again, anybody heavy set that's funny, I guess I fall into that category. Finally, he says, well, my my son is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, very much well aware of me. You remind him of him. And uh, and I had another, uh, again, another Rotarian who is a background actor and he's hilarious. Uh, he, he actually saw something, I guess it was coming up. And he said, hey, and I guess it reminds, you know, in that conversation during these community meetings, Zoom meetings or whatever. And he said, uh, I got an email and it said audition for Chris Farley. And he goes, dude, 
you are so Chris Farley. You always have been. Why don't, why don't you try? And I thought, you know what? Sure. You know, so I went through it. It said, uh, it gave you a list of things to audition. I had to do the whole Matt Foley scene. Um, I had to do the David Letterman scene and I had to, to uh, you know, do a couple uh, scenarios when I did the audition tape, you just pre-recorded yourself. So, and, and one of the auditions, <laughs> Mike, and, and let's just be honest, uh, uh, I, I do have a bit of a comedian, you know, I guess a Farley personality, even before Farley was even around, you're right. I, I mean, you you said I would literally come burling through those doors because they were really heavy. And and I would just be oh, like, God. hey, guys, you know, and, and I was in charge of weather and traffic at the time, and we didn't really have computers. So my job was to quickly come in and tell you that there's an accident on the 401 and Billy, the tow truck driver just called. And I'd be like, Berylin and, and Jeff Lumby. And at the time, Todd Lewis was the producer. And you were the new guy. I still remember that day when I came barging in and Jeff would be in a serious moment of doing Frasier voices. And, and Todd Lewis would be like, hey, you know, like I, I got to get these carts in place. And, and, and there's Mike sitting in the corner going, hey, what are you doing in here? <laughs> so Jeff would always be like, hey, Adam, how are you? Okay, you know, don't have time to talk. We're getting ready for that. <laughs> and, and then Todd would turn around and be like, hey, you know what? Seriously, I got like 16 things I got to write down this piece of paper that said the commercial. And, and you were the best, dude. It was like, who are you? And I'm like, yeah. I'm here with a traffic report and it looks like it's really bad. And you remember you going, geez, that sounds like news. Sure, let's talk about it. <laughs> anyway. So that that has always been with me. So I guess part of it was when I did these auditions, I didn't have to act, Mike. I just had to be me. So all I was doing was pers personifying, I guess, Chris Farley. So I send it off and um, and I just thought, you know what? I threw it into the wind. I got a full time jobs. So I got multiple things. So it wasn't really one of those. I, I guess if I get it, I get it, whatever. And they wanted somebody young, somebody 30. You know, he died when he was 33. So uh, I'm not going to give my age away, but I'm way older than that. And uh, and I thought I'm not going to fit the part. You know, I probably just don't have the look anymore or whatever. And they called me and said, would would you be willing to do a callback? And I was like, whoa, oh, sure. Why not? And the first it was, well, do you have your agent? Can you have your agent contact? No, nope, don't have one of those. Then it was set it up with a Zoom. I did the audition again. Um, this time it was very and it was all improv. And I have to say, like, that was probably the only talent I have is improv. I can't memorize lines for the life of me. Anyway, I did the bit and they gave me the call and they said, we'd like to offer you the part for Chris Farley. And uh, and I <laughs> I mean, it's an honor, first of all, to to represent and even personify this gentleman. And uh, and I mean, he was always the, the highlight of our, our comedy. Everyone would always say on Sunday was, did you see Saturday Night Live last night? I mean, exactly. It, and then everybody would try to do the old Farley impersonations and the Matt Foley's. And anyway, he was uh, uh, obviously very popular. So when, you know, we, we ended up filming it and I just finished uh, about a week ago. So, uh, and it was quite a tumultuous experience trying, being Chris Farley, I was glad I was done. I mean, I almost wanted to just say, hell, I'll just do the blow, grab the hookers and call it a day. I get it, dude. <laughs> We're in conversation with Adam Oldfield talking about his experience playing Chris Farley. And I'm saying like a, a, a docu-series. Is there a name for you? Can we say the name? Because there's certain things I know that you can't say. Do, do uh, Now, yeah, do we know what, what do, we, do we have a name for it? It's called the dark dark side of comedy. I can't tell that. Um, yeah. I, you know, I I can't give much more about what what the whole other series are or otherwise. I do know that I I you know I played the part. That's that's the 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 series type. Now now let's talk something very interesting. Now this is how you know you, you talk about the degrees of 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 separation. Um, talk about the 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 stunt director who was with oh, you yeah. side by side because this is unbelievable. Yeah. This, uh, you know what, I mean, one of the honors of being on set was that I had Chris Farley's original stunt coordinator. Um, his name was Rob and phenomenal guy. Like, I mean, this guy was like, I was in awe. I mean, he was Jackie Chan's stunt man. He was Bruce Willis's stunt man. I mean, I'm looking at this guy going, you look like nothing like Jackie Chan, but the fact that you were jumping from buildings and doing all sorts of Spider-Man stuff and Kung Fu things was amazing. Anyway, he was, Fantastic. Now, the, the crazy part to this, Chris, was I was the face of Farley. So I, my job when I there was actually two Farleys that were hired. So I am the face and I was the actor and I had a body double. So which made me feel good when I first. Well, cause, cause, let, let's be, Chris was is much bigger than you. I mean, I, I know you kid about your, your your physique sometimes. The fact is, I, I know you run marathons like you're actually a, a very active and, and, and a pretty good uh, athlete, Like you're athletic. So was Chris, but you're yeah. you're not nearly as big as Chris Farley. 
Well, according to the stunt coordinator, I was his size. That's what made really? me kind of look at it. And I, yeah, that and surprises I me. At it does. And I, I, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, seriously. Anyway, uh, I had a, I had to do the Matt Foley scene. And that part I can tell you because, you know, it's pretty much a staple of Farley. But Correct. Um, I had to fall through a few tables. And let me tell you something, <laughs> you know, I, I, I have to be honest, many people don't know who I am, but I have dove soft hands. I don't get very, I don't get hurt. I don't, uh, paper cuts throw me into a tizzy. I mean, it's just like a three week off cycle of repair. Anyway, uh, the stunt coordinator taught me some tricks to fall on a table. And he was giving me some, uh, at the same time, showing me the, the, the art of it, my body double who was supposed to be doing it. They wanted me because they wanted my face. So the whole scene was, you know, uh, falling on the table and they wanted that. Anyway, the first table goes great. The second table uh, was was great. It split. The third one, for whatever reason, for the love of God, didn't break. <laughs> so I feel it jam into my shoulder and my and, and, and this, uh, you know, it wasn't bad, but it was funny because as I smash on the table, I had to do the part and, and act it out. And uh, and there had to been about 25 people on scene. So I'm laying on the table and I'm just wrapping up and I can feel it, my chest, my shoulders. And I'm like, oh God, I go to get up and nobody's there. And I'm like looking around going, what? And they're all standing behind the camera, like watching the, the back feed or, or the repeat. And I'm sitting there and I got blood coming out of my chin. And I'm like, hello, hello, hello. But they were, but they were actually thrilled with what they were seeing, what they captured on camera. Yeah. And in fact, I think the stunt director kind of wanted did, a selfie, dude. He yes. wanted a selfie with yours truly. It was kind of, no, no film photography. And he came up to me and he goes, Hey dude, come here. I want to get a selfie with you. And I'm like, this is awesome. You want a <laughs> selfie with me? <laughs> this is, this is an honor, man. So anyway, he takes a photo and he, he, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of it, my face, we had some actually was comical as they're catching me up. I'm doing the Hans and, Fr and he's jumping in with me and we're doing the, oh, I'm no girly man. I'm not going to be about the table. Yeah, so, but it, it, it must have seemed a little sur sur surreal simply because, you know, we did that uh, project where uh, I was uh, we were shooting like that uh, fun scene down in, in, in Buffalo, uh, yeah. uh, right in the, uh, well, what HBC Center, what it was called at the time with the Sabres. You, we came up with this character called Ed Polanski, who was a, a security guard. Basically, you're doing Farley. But then you fast forward to 2022 and here you are working with Chris Farley's stunt double and he's taking selfies with you and yeah. people are freaking out over the job you did. It must have seemed a little surreal. It was. It, it was it was very surreal. And I mean, it, it gave me a lot of uh, it gave me a lot of confidence, I think, at the end. I mean, when I was working, there was other people that auditioned to Farley that were there. For example, one gentleman, he was a phenomenal actor. He he looked like Farley. I mean, I, I acted and I have similarities, but he actually, I think, really would have probably visualized the look. Uh, he played Chris's brother. And, uh, and it, it, at the end of it, it was like, we all got along uh, and, and we were all talking about like, how, how was Farley? And, and the hard part when I was doing this was, it wasn't just the on set thing. Like, I can tell you, like I was doing the parts of like the, the, uh, the, the, the Matt Foley's and, you know, the character bits that he did. There was a scene where, you know, he does the dancing in the cheerleader bit. And, and there was a lot of that, but very minimal. Most of it, I can tell you was the sadness of the real Chris Farley. So part of my challenge was, and when I was, you know, getting ready for this part and going through it, there's no footage of Chris Farley as Chris Farley. He was always on. So on, even, yeah. even the videos they were giving me or, or clips I was working with, I, I mean, I had to try and dig. There was nothing about the man where you would just see him like on a Howard Stern or do a Mike Richards show and just be like, Chris, you know, I mean, David Letterman, he was still in character. He would always... Yeah come out as the whirlwind and it was almost like a show it wasn't a chris farley interview and so the hard part for me in this whole bit that i can tell was it was um i had to be the real chris farley most of it that i filmed was going to be what it was like going through the trials of of him his brother and and talking about his his ways of growing up and and that was very very difficult for me so because i had nothing to go off of like was he always like this was he always just you know hunched shoulders arms moving and you know and and if it was man i could see why the guy would need to be on something to keep that energy going and um anyway it, it, it's a it's a comedic show i know but it's got the the seriousness of it so it's got well, a serious side to it why don't you hold on because because i know because i want to talk about 
all the other things and what you actually do for a living. And there's more than one thing. So can you hang on for the, like we've got, a, we've got five minutes at the top of the hour and then we, then we got to get to somebody else, but you know what, H hang on, come back in the virtual studio from your private jet. It's an interesting life you live. Uh, and so uh, hang on, I'm going to go grab a coffee. We're going to step down now. What we'll do, uh, Brendan, we'll do the traffic right now as we do on the fives. Uh, always on the fives. And of course, Brendan with the traffic, and then we'll come back at the top of the hour with Adam Oldfield. And we'll talk about, aside from the Chris Farley, what Adam actually does, because it is a lot. Here's Brendan and the traffic. News Talk Saga 960 is the new home for Raw Mike Richards. Brought to you by Bell Lifestyle Products. Also streaming live on saga960.ca. And now from the Bell Lifestyle Studio, here's Mike. It is eight o'clock. We're all Mike Richards in studio with Adam Oldfield telling us about the docu series, looking at the dark side of comedy as he's played uh, Chris Farley, which now finally being recognized and being paid for, as opposed to just making all of us laugh in a bar or a hallway or a men's room when you're not prepared for it. Instant show when Adam walks in to a room, but that's been uh, one of the great pleasures in knowing him, but he's also probably, and maybe you're sort of guessing this by listening to the interview, but very hardworking guy. He always has been. So he, he's one of these guys that hustles and he's not afraid to do more than one thing at a time. And as you just heard as a Rotarian, and, um, you know, very community minded, right. Does a lot of stuff. The community has always been that way, but, um, the ad agency that he has started and it's been around since uh well i want to say like what 2003 something like that so explain what is all the things that that you have done because you do a lot yeah yeah i got i got a lot on my plate and uh you know what actually today mike is our uh, 19th birthday i started the advertising agency if you can believe it so happy birthday to fpm marketing and design fpm3 uh i started that in 2003 right after my radio actually i ended up mm -hmm. you know kind of realizing geez i'm never gonna make it in the world this is i'm a one-trick pony and farley doesn't really cut it anymore <laughs> so um yeah i ended up getting into advertising from my experience working in radio and just um you know uh seeing the benefit of actually the truth was i worked in promotions as you remember at y95 and i remember doing a pitch how I got into the whole like this sucks i gotta figure a new career i went on a, a sales pitch with a with a sales rep jerry retzer remember jerry oh yeah sean yeah, Henry yeah. and or, or sean connery and he would speak real close to you right <laughs> anyway uh we did a pitch for diet pepsi and i remember doing the thing and we went to toronto and we pitched uh, uh 97 7 q 107 and uh and, and we we walk out and we got the whole thing we got the whole pitch i remember driving back with him and i said geez jerry um you know my farley uh, you know animated young personality i go how much money did we make was that like a was that like cool and he goes oh adam i uh, believe we uh today i made about sixty five thousand dollars and i'm like Boom what the and he drove me back and i'm like look at I, I remember sitting in silence and you know he tried to make small talk but i was just like dumbfounded i go how'd you make that he goes well you get paid commission and the whole deal was like over six hundred thousand. so we get back he drops me off for my twenty thousand dollars salary to go and finish the work i didn't do um and then i was like that's it i gotta i gotta find like I, he made three years salary in in a half an yeah. hour and i did all the work so God bless Jerry. I mean, he was one of the best, but uh, I ended up going in and started the agency. Um, we're now in Vancouver, Toronto. I have like 60 people that work for us in, in that business. I've always been a nerd, a tech nerd, you know that. And uh, I think I've helped you more times with your IT. Well, let's talk about this tech thing because I was, uh, you know, looking at uh, you know some of the messages here today and so on um, that people should understand. You do go on radio stations. In fact, I, I, I think uh, CHML, I think 900 still possibly, but at least you did for a period of time. You've been on uh, some chorus radio stations because you're their tech guy. You talk about tech on the radio. Yeah, yeah, I do it every Friday, 1130. And I talk on the Toronto station, just sporadically as their tech expert, I, I, I'm still in radio. Um, and, I, and I enjoy it. I think if it could do what I like, if I could work that and make money and do it, I would. <laughs> um, but I, somehow I had to like go and start my own business. And then uh, I also own a, a furnace and duct cleaning company it was my father's he ran it and my uh, my mother unfortunately passed away years ago. And I'm an only child. So it was kind of like dad was going to close it down or, you know, I was gonna have to take care 
of them one way or another. So my wife and I, uh, Michelle Oldfield, uh, who is, by the way, when you hear everything I do, it's not just me. My wife does everything for me, just to be clear. So if it's like, this guy's out of his mind. No, my wife really, thank you, is my staple. So uh, she came in with me. We agreed. We took over the duct cleaning company. It was three years ago. Uh, I also teach at Mohawk College part-time. So I teach radio sales at Mohawk College, uh, teaching the young minds of tomorrow how to make a buck. Um, and as I mentioned, the agencies in Vancouver, Toronto, and Orlando uh, from the advertising side. And then, uh, yeah, we've uh, we've been we've been able to kind of keep it together. And, and it's not been easy during COVID with many different things. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's actually been, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, actually. Uh, what I say, uh, Mike, is when people say, so what do you do for a living? I say, I'm a professional entrepreneur. And I do radio on the side. That's kind well, of my, my explanation. I know we're, we're, we're short here, but but here's what we're going to do. We, we've got to figure this in one way or the other, how to get you know, as a, the gadget guy or the, or the tech guy, if you're able to do it. Uh, would love to have you back on again because it's gone by way too quickly, I, which I knew it would. Uh, so uh, first of all, congratulations on all your successes. It's certainly well-deserved. And you. certainly, you know, when you work as hard as you have in your life to have success, I mean, all of us and anyone who knows you just wants to you to see that success and understand just really how good how talented you are uh, your your lovely wife michelle uh is a big part of that as as we know and it'd be very difficult for you to do what you do without her so um there's certainly a, a lot of love in this last uh, 35 minutes so i'm thrilled and i'm so glad you joined me it's been a long time since we were like even even talk in the air and hopefully get a chance adam to do it again but we just really appreciate you taking this time here this morning and we will catch up again real soon Awesome. Well, thanks. We appreciate it. You guys having me. And listen, listen, all you whippersnappers, you don't want to give up your dreams. Otherwise, you'll be eating a steady diet of government cheese, living in a van down by the river. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Adam Oldfield, ladies and gentlemen. So great to have him on the show this morning. Outstanding. It is uh, actually moments away from Jason Tom. He'll talk about.